today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to personalize color changing sequin materials such as pillows, makeup bags, etc. This is a color changing makeup bag that I made my daughter. On the pink side, I did her name. You flip the sequins up, it turns to a teal turquoise color, and we did a horse silhouette. Now let's go to our supplies list. You're going to need your silhouette cameo, cutting mat, tape measure, your object to personalize, 631 or 651 vinyl. I recommend contact paper because it is less sticky, but if you don't have that, regular transfer paper will work. Scissors, a heat press. If you don't have a heat press, a household iron will work. Teflon sheet. If you don't have one, a pillowcase or parchment paper will work as well. Sharpie Pro. I have used regular Sharpies and they do work. However, in the different comparisons that I have done, I do recommend using a Sharpie Pro. You need a design or designs of your choice that you want to put on your materials. And then you need acetone and cotton swabs. I have already designed the designs that I need for the project for the tutorial. We're going to do an M on one side, flip up the sequence, and then it will reveal the name. At this time, you will measure your object where you want your images to be placed. Take note of the length and the height. If you're using two images, both of your images more than likely will not be the same size. I'm using a single letter for one size, so this single letter is not going to be the same size as the complete name. Also, when you're designing, you need to draw a box around each of your images. This is very important to do because what you're doing is we are making a stencil to lay on top of your object. When we cut this out, when we go to weed, we will weed opposite of what we normally do. So instead of taking out the box, we will be taking out the M. So we will be left with the box and then the hole where the M would have been so that we can lay the whole square box on top of the object. Same way with the name. Now when you are designing, if you are using text, you need to be sure that you are using a bold enough text. You don't want to use little teeny tiny skinny lines. Doing so is going to make it much more difficult to see your text, to see your text on your object. So try to pick a font that is bold, or really thick. If you like a certain font that you don't feel is that thick, write it out and go over to offset and offset it some and just remove the original text, a thicker text for your stencil. Thin lines do not work as well for these projects. You have your design exactly like you need it. You've drawn your box around your images, load your vinyl on your mat, your mat in your machine, Go ahead and go to send. You will choose your cut settings based on what you normally cut your vinyl, whether it's glossy, matte, whatever you normally cut your vinyl on. Now for my two boxes, I only choose cut edge for them. And then for the inner pieces, I just use my regular cut settings for vinyl glossy. And then I send it through to be cut. I'm going to go ahead and load my machine with a vinyl. Go ahead and get these stencils cut out, and I'll meet you back at the craft table for the rest of the process. Okay, now I have my stencils cut out. These are the two stencils that I'm going to use for my pillow. This one I've already weeded and applied the contact paper. When you go to weed it, you are going to reverse weed it. Instead of removing the main square box, you're only going to weed out what we would normally save. So I've done that on the first one, and then on the second one, I've done that as well. Left the square, and I just removed the inner pieces of the name. Now, I need to add contact paper for the name. This is the contact paper that I'm going to be using, just contact brand. Contact paper for the transfer of the vinyl to the pillow. I use the contact paper because it is less sticky than regular transfer tape, and it is easier to remove from the sequins. If you only have transfer tape, you can use that by all means. We'll add the contact paper to that in just a moment. This is the Sharpie Pro that I was talking about in the supplies list. This 
the size is called the Magnum. They also have a Sharpie Pro in the king size. I picked it up at Walmart, just over in the pen section. I have received better results with the Sharpie Pro markers. They just work a whole lot better. Use what works for you. This is just what works for me and what I can show you here on this tutorial what does work. Also put down cotton swabs and acetone. It, just the same acetone that you use to remove fingernail polish. This that I have here is 100% pure acetone that I got in the fingernail polish section at Walmart. Regular cotton swabs. And I use this for touch-ups. If for some reason you have any bleed-throughs or you mess up or you want to start over, use acetone and your Sharpie will come off. Just a tip there. What I'm going to be personalizing today is this hard pillow. Pick this up at Family Dollar for $5. I'm going to be personalizing this with our stencils. On the dark pink sequin side, I'm going to place the capital letter M. Then whenever you flip the sequins over to the silver side, that is where I'm going to place her name. The first thing you need to decide is if you're doing two images, which side you want your first image on. Whichever side you want to do your first image on, flip all your sequins to that side. Then you want to pull your object close to you and make sure that all of your sequins are flipped to the correct side. If you need to, you can use your fingernail or your weeding hook and flip those sequins over. If they are not flipped over when you do your fill-in process, it will mess your design up if it is in the area of where your stencil is. Once you get that done, all your sequins are down exactly where they need to be. You're going to heat up your heat press at 215 degrees. Now, in some cases, you may find that some of your sequins are bent or some of them don't want to lay down flat properly, or even if they do, you still want to use your heat press or an iron will work if that's all you have. Like I said, heat press at 215 degrees. You are going to heat press this for five seconds, lift up, then you're going to rotate your object, heat press again for five seconds, lift up, bring back to your surface or your craft table and apply your first stencil. I'm going to go ahead and take this over to the heat press and press this for the 10 seconds and I will come back and we will apply the first stencil. Now we're going to add our stencil. If you will, when you remove your item from your last press, your sequins will be warm. That's a good thing. That helps your vinyl to adhere better to your sequins. So go ahead and peel your stencil off of your paper, assuming that you've already got the contact paper on it. And you're going to make sure that you have it lined up exactly where you want it. Then you're gonna start from left to right and gently fold down. Once you get it completely placed, if your item is squishy like a pillow, you're going to flatten it completely as you press, okay? Make sure you pay close attention to all the edges in the corners. If you have small little pieces, you need to make sure that you pay close attention to rubbing and making sure that it gets adhered to your sequence. Once you have everything laid down how you want it, you're gonna go ahead and remove your transfer tape. Pull your transfer tape. I'm going to start like this and as I start to get to the stencil, now this one I don't have to worry so much about because I don't have small details. But when you do have small details, you're going to have to hold your vinyl down. As you already have this part uncovered from the transfer tape, I'm going to take my hand, hold your transfer tape, and just slightly pull. You don't want to warp your vinyl or to stretch it because that will mess up your design. Take your time in removing your transfer tape. This is not a race. Once you get closer to the edges of your vinyl, you're gonna have to pay very close attention. Keep changing the position of how you pull your transfer tape depending on the direction of your stencil. 
So now that this part is going down, I've changed the direction that I'm pulling so that I'm not messing up that small detail where it comes, that point that comes down on the M. Making sure that your sequence that is not covered with a vinyl stays down in the position that it is supposed to. Now we have that stencil on. Now that your stencil is adhered and you have removed your transfer tape, go through with your finger in the direction that your sequence is laying down, which mine is going towards the bottom, and we're just going to make sure that the edges of our stencil is adhered to our sequence. Anything on the edges here does not matter. We're only more concerned about this part. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our marker and you're going to use your marker and you're going to fill in in the direction of your sequence. So on the pink sequence, the sequence go in the direction of down. So you would take your Sharpie and you would follow your stencil in the down direction. Do not go up and down because when you do, it's going to flip your, your sequence up and you're going to get black on the other color and it's not gonna work. Take your time. This is not a race. Turn it towards you, pay close attention and get all of your sequins colored as much as you can. Remember to go in the direction that the sequence is pointing. This sequence is going down, so I'm going to be going down. When you get to, the, to your sides, you kind of want to overlap on your vinyl, so you will be marking on your vinyl. This kind of helps keep it down for one. For two, also, it gives you more of a crisp line. So I'm going to go ahead and go across all of my lines. Do not flip your sequence. Now what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and speed this up and get this finished and I'll come back when I get this completely filled in before we go to remove the stencil. Once you have your stencil completely colored in, you can start removing your vinyl. Find a piece of your vinyl and start gently removing it. Now if you were to have any inner pieces that had to be left behind, you can take your tool, your hook, and you can pick those pieces off after you're finished removing your main piece of your vinyl. Just go ahead and just remove your vinyl. What I recommend doing after you remove your vinyl, heat your heat press back up to the 215 degrees. Then what you're going to do is you're going to press your image that you just colored in twice at five seconds a piece. Also, before you do your heat press, if you see any bleed through from your stencil with your marker at this time, you would take your acetone and your cotton swabs and you would carefully go through and remove any bleed through at this time. After you do that, then you would go ahead and move over to the heat press. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the heat press and do my, my two five second presses and then we'll come back and then we will adhere our second stencil on the other side of the sequence and we will get that colored in. Okay, now we're going to add the name stencil to the silver side. So we have all the sequins brushed up. The silver sequins go in the up direction. I've added contact paper to my stencil. Now I'm going to remove that. Now I have my stencil removed from my transfer paper backing. I need to pay close attention to the small piece left over from the Y, from the inside of the Y, 
and the inside of the E. Now I'm going to go ahead and center my name onto my pillow. Longer stencils, you want to start from the center and move from the center out to one side and go from the center to the other side. Make sure that you rub down your stencil well. Do not forget to heat press your item before applying your vinyl. Heat pressing it before applying your stencil is going to help tremendously. Now when removing your contact paper from your stencil, you've got to pay attention to these small intricate pieces so that way you don't lose them. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the contact paper. Remember, go slowly. You are not in a race. Be very careful around the intricate pieces. You do not want to stretch them out and you do not want to misplace them from the original stencil. Keeping my hand on top of the stencil as I am removing the contact paper, holding down what I've already got placed, but it's also holding down what is being removed. Now I'm coming up to the inner piece of the Y. Now it's up a little bit, so I'm just going to take my finger and hold that down while removing the rest of the transfer tape. The contact paper makes it so much easier with it being a low-tech transfer for the vinyl, and it makes it so much easier to use with these pillows. Remember the same rules apply. Once you have removed your contact paper, you're going to go through and you're going to take your finger in the direction that the sequence, mine's going on this side on the silver, it's going from bottom up. So we're going to go bottom up and rubbing our stencil to ensure that all the edges are adhered. The sides of the square or the rectangle do not matter. The same rules apply when filling in. Whatever direction your sequins are going in is the direction that you will fill in. So the silver sequins are going from bottom up, so we are obviously going to color from bottom up. We are not going to go bottom up and down, bottom up and down, because if we do, it will cause a severe mess. Color in all of your sequins in your stencil area. Take your time. You're not in a race for this either. I'm going to go ahead and finish coloring this in and we will come back when I get ready to pull this stencil off. Now that we have that stencil colored in, we're going to go ahead and remove the main stencil, then we'll remove the two small pieces. And because the sequins go from bottom up, we're going to remove starting at the bottom and remove going up. Okay, now I'm going to remove the two small pieces. I'm going to find my two little vinyl pieces. Sometimes they're a little bit tricky. So let me find those and remove them. After you take your stencil off, if you see any areas while your sequins are still in the same direction that they need to be, if you see any areas that need touched up, now's the time to do so. If you need to remove any bleed throughs or any corrections, go ahead and take your acetone and your cotton swabs and do that. If you need to add some ink to an area, you can also go ahead and take your Sharpie and kind of mark on those areas. Just be careful not to get out of the stencil area. If and when you are satisfied with your design, you will take it over and you will heat press at 215 degrees for five seconds, two times. We will go ahead and do that now and then we will come back and we will wrap up this tutorial. So we're back from the heat press and we are finished. Now we have made a personalized color changing sequin pillow. You can do this with any color changing sequin items that you can find. There's our first design that we made on the pink. 
and then our second design in silver. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial, and I hope you will now make many personalized items using the sequin color changing materials. If you would like to share your creations, we would love to see them on our Crafty Chaotic Life Facebook group. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to contact me anytime. You can leave a comment below, or you can feel free to email me. I hope that you will join us next time for another tutorial, and I hope you have a great week. Happy crafting!